Hi there. What? What's your name, kid? Who are you calling, kid? Who the hell are you? Rosso's the name. Murder's my game. Are you a detective? Let's just say I'm here to find the truth. Cool. Just like on the telly. Cut the crap and tell me your name. Liam McGuire. What are you doing hanging around the bar, McGuire? I'm on the run. From me dad. Why? Did you do something bad? I ain't done nothing, boss. You can tell me, kid. Is it your dad? Oh, sir. He drinks. Every last penny. Down his evil throat. And there's me poor old mother. Bedridden and dying of presumption. I tried to buy her medicine. Chopped firewood for father Mahoney till me fingers bled. The old skin flint cheated me too. But I took the pennies he gave me back home. Look, ma, says I. See what your darling son has earned with his own sweat and blood. When suddenly, me dad appears and grabs the loot. I'm off to Dublin, heavy drinking, says he. Watch out till I get back. That's why I runned away. Something in the grin on his face told me he wasn't being strictly truthful. Compared to him, Huckleberry Finn was a candidate for altar boy of the year. Do you know a man called Pegram? Can you describe him like on the telly in the cop shows? He's an English archaeologist. I know the man you mean if he's the one. Can you tell me where I'd find Pegram? No, I can't because he's not here now, but if I seize him, I'll ask him. Do you know what Pegram was doing in the castle? Digging for buried treasure. Jewels and gold and skeletons, like in the films. Do you know anything about Pegram's dig? He wouldn't let me anywhere near it. I offered to help, but he chased me off. I didn't want to see his smelly old hole anyhow. Did anyone... Pegram bought some students and bums with him. He reckoned no one in Loch Marne would know what to look for. The only local guy who worked for him was Sean Fitzgerald. What does this Fitzgerald guy look like? Big head, big ears, and face irons. What? You know, specky tackles, glasses. He's blind as a bat without him. What can you tell me about the castle, McGuire? What do you want to know? Well, can I get inside? No, it's locked up. Does anyone live there? No, only... What? Oh, nothing. You know something about the castle you're not telling me, don't you? No. What is it you're covering up? Is it something you're scared of? I ain't scared of nothing. I'll give you one last chance to tell me about the castle. Oh, yeah? And what if I don't? Then I'm taking you back to school. Oh. There's a ghost. It's called the Phantom Aloch Man. Have you seen a guy dressed as a clown? Here in Loch Marne? They all dress like clowns. The man I'm looking for is a dangerous psychotic. Jesus. It's just like that film I saw. Did this clown see? And he's after this kid who saw him kill a guy. He tries to warn the sheriff. Only no one believes him. Then, while he's in the tub, the clown cuts him up with a chainsaw. My God. That doesn't sound suitable for a kid like you. Who are you calling a kid? I'm 25. Yeah, right. You're not a day over 14. Oh no, it's 25 that I am. Married with a car and three kids. Ten kids if you count the wives. You're not telling me you believe in ghosts, are you? Mister, I seen it with me very own eyes. Last Tuesday night. I went up to see what that dig was about. I just reached the top of the wall when I hears this awful noise. What sort of noise? A horrible snuffling and snorting, like O'Brien's pig, only worst. It was coming from inside the castle. Did you find out what was making the noise in the castle? No fear. 
I just sat there on the wall like Humpty Dumpty. The moon was cracked and greasy like an old dinner plate. The yard was full of shadows that could have been hiding anything. I would have gone home, but me legs had lost their stuffing. Did you get to see the ghost? Indeed I did. And a fearsome sight it is too. I sat on me ass, waited while the moon went down. Then out it comes from the shadows, all grey and tattered and hunched over like an old bent willow. Then I hears this spluttering and splashing, an horrible laughter in the dark. I was so scared. Well, I fell off the bloody wall. I'm sure there's a rational explanation for what you saw at the castle. There is. The bloody place is haunted. Have you ever seen this man before? What a slimy character. No, I never seen him. Give me your hand. Get lost. Oh, come on. I just want to show you a little trick. No way, mister. I don't do tricks. Father Mahoney told me I'd burn in hell if I did. I just want to shake your hand, that's all. Oh, all right. Gotcha. Neat, huh? Didn't feel a thing. See you later, kid. Okay, mister. Mr. Fitzgerald? What? I need to speak with you urgently. No! Get him! What's the problem? Can I get you another drink? Oh, no, thank you. I shouldn't be drinking at all. I want tablets for my nerves. No! More than a pint, and I'll pass get out. Him. What can you tell me about the castle? There is nothing there. Just an old ruin. How old? I really couldn't tell you. Have you ever explored the castle yourself? I used to play there sometimes, when I was a kid. <gasps> then one of the little ones fell off the wall, and broke his head and died. We didn't go there anymore. You haven't been up there recently? No. <gasps> Do you know Professor Pegram? He's the archaeologist, isn't he? That's right. Where can I find Professor Pegram? I heard he's gone fishing. I don't know where. Did you work at Professor Pegram's dig? <laughs> what gave you that idea? McGuire says you did. You don't believe that damn hooligan, do you? Why not? His probation officer could tell you a tale or two. Have you heard about the gem which Pegram found? I heard a rumor, but you can't believe everything you hear or see, can you? Do you recognize the man in this photograph? Uh, no. Uh, at least I don't think so. Look closely. He has a scar on his face. No, I'm sure I don't know him. Shake my hand. It's a trick, isn't it? Damn it, you're right. I can't seem to fool anyone. See you later. Hi, my name's Stobart, George Stobart. Hello there, mister. What can I do for you? Can you tell me anything about the castle on the hill? Oh, I don't know much about anything. You should ask Mr. O'Brien here. He does joined up writing. Would you be one of them history fellows yourself? No. Yes. That's right. Professor Stobart, Miskatonic University. You're an archaeologist, and you're asking us about the castle. Excuse me, Mr. O'Brien. The gentleman was talking to me. 
How come you didn't leave with the others? I didn't know they'd gone. Oh, yes. Packed their spades and shovels and away they went. Seems I missed all the excitement. What excitement? Professor Pegram's discovery. Haven't you heard? No! No? Do you know anything about Pegram's excavation? Only that he didn't have the right tools for the job. What he needed was shovels and a JCB. Pegram was digging for historical remains, not coal. Is that a fact? What the hell for? It's the science of archaeology, Pat. Understanding how people used to live by what they've left behind. One day archaeologists might be digging up our remains. Imagine that, Mr. O'Brien. I wonder what they'll find. Well, it won't be arrowheads and beakers. Fast food cartons and favorite tom-doms, more likely. Did anyone from the village work at Pegram's Dig? I tried it myself, but that high and mighty history man called me incontinent. What a nerd. Hadn't I dug more holes than the rest of them put together? Do you remember seeing Sean Fitzgerald at the dig? Oh, let me see now. I think me brain box needs a spot of lubrication. Can I buy you a drink? You most certainly can. Give me a drink for my friend here. Who, Doyle? Has he conned you into buying for him? Shame on you, Patrick. Same again. Just a point this time, Michael. One point of brown coming up. Do you remember Sean Fitzgerald now? I can picture the scene as if it was only last week. Come to think of it, it was only last week. Fitzgerald was there all right. Him and a bunch of students. He was speaking with the boss man. Is it true that Pegram found a valuable gem? What? First I heard of it. Where have you been, Pat? That gem is the talk of every town from Loch Lan to Ballydoon. Nobody told me. The lucky sod. So that's why he scampered. No. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? It's a handsome mug on that fella, to be sure. Is he a film star? Don't be fooled. This is the face of a psychopathic killer. No. no. Well, there's one in the eye for me and my men. May I shake your hand? No, you can't. Well, how come? Because I'll spill me beer if you do. Bye for now. No! No! Hello. No! Doyle told me you definitely worked at the dig. You don't believe him, dear. Patrick Doyle is a moron and a scoundrel. Even so, he saw you talking to Pegram. You can't prove that, mister. See you later. Hey, McGuire. What do you want to know? Are you sure Fitzgerald worked at the dig? Oh, yes. It was him, all right. Would I tell a lie? Well, he denies it. I saw them together only last night. I wish you'd told me that sooner. What were they doing? Pegram gave Fitzy a box. He didn't look too happy about it. I knew it. But how am I going to persuade him to part with it? Break his fingers. No, nah, I couldn't do that. I could. Thanks for the offer, kid, but I'll try a more subtle approach. Chinese burns? Do you know where I could find Fitzgerald? He's inside, but you won't get no sense out of him. How come? Is he drunk? He's like a frightened rabbit. A real bag of nerves. Why, the fella's scared of his own shadow. What's Fitzgerald scared of? Everything and everyone. So I shouldn't have any trouble getting him to talk? He's a pushover, but don't scare him too much. Try the soft touch. 
Butter him up a bit. Take a look at this, Maguire. Hmm. It's an ID card. What of it? Ever heard of Thomas Merlin or the Gruber Electronics Corporation? No. See you later, kid. Okay, mister. Hello. McGuire says he saw you working at the dig. What's more, he saw you talking with Pegram. I knew this would happen. I knew I'd get caught. Just my luck. Grasped up by a delinquent and a dimwit. I need to talk to Professor Pegram, if he's still alive. What do you mean? Is he in danger? Yeah, you too, if I'm right. You're not from the Social Security. <gasps> Hell no. What makes you think that? Well, uh, I was claiming benefit at the same time I was working for Pegram. I'm not in a position to make judgments, Sean. That's between you and your conscience. All I want is to talk to Pegram about the gem. But he's not here! I know that. But he left that package with you, didn't he? So where did Pegram go? I don't know. I swear. He came to see me early this morning. Said he was leaving. He asked me to give this package to a guy called Marque. What did Pegram find at the castle? The entrance to an underground chamber. It was filled with earth and rubble. Pegram had us dig it out. We uncovered a secret room, a hidden chapel. Did Pegram find the gem in the altar room? I don't know. He made us leave and wouldn't tell us why. Half an hour later he came out, white as a sheet he was. He closed down the dig and locked up the castle, sent us all away. From the sound of it, Pegram had discovered more than just the gem. Show me what's in the package, Sean. I can't do that. Why not? I promised the professor. So what? You didn't have any qualms about your benefit scam. So where's the harm in taking a peek inside Pegram's package? You don't know these people. I can't. I don't dare. This is your last chance to show me the package, Fitzgerald. I've been patient with you, but now it's time to kick ass. But he'll kill me. Who will? The man from Paris. Jack Marquet. Pegram told me if I gave him the package, unopened, I'd hear no more about it. But if I double-crossed Marquet, I'd be dead. I'll deal with Jacques Marquet. Give the... No! Why should I trust you? I don't know who to trust anymore. I wish I'd never even heard of the Lockmarn gem. Hey, I just seen a big red. Get out of here, Maguire. Come back when you're old enough. What's the lad howling about? A big red sports car. Sean Fitzgerald's been run over. Get out! <laughs> Noisy little tyke. Maybe you should send out some medicinal brandy, Michael. Oh, yes. And who's going to pay for it? Not me. Me too, neither. I was telling the truth about Fitzy, mister. Okay, okay, calm down. Now tell me what happened. I was standing here, minding me own business. 
when I saw this beautiful red sports car coming up over the hill. Would you look at that, says I, and I going over to take a closer look. Next thing, Fitzy comes tearing out of the pub and nearly knocks me on the ass, but the car just flies at him. It was too fast for poor old Fitzy, and hit him an awful wallop. He goes flying up on top. Jesus, says I, I thought he was a goner. Next thing, the driver hops out, and I couldn't believe my eyes. He was dressed like a bloody pixie. Did this pixie have a scar on his cheek? I couldn't see. He was wearing a stupid mask. Are you a special agent? Sorry to disappoint you, kid, but I'm not. Did Fitzgerald drop anything when he was hit? I didn't see. It all happened so fast. See you later, kid. Okay, mister. I pushed the switch down, but in doing so it snapped off in my hand. Top of the morning to you. I beg your pardon. Well, that's what you Irish say, isn't it? Do you want something? Or are you just flaunting your xenophobia? Well, I, I was trying to be sociable. <laughs> Is it a room you're after? No, thank you. I don't plan to stay too long. Who does? Most folk take one look at Loch Martin and jump back on the bus. I'll try a glass of beer, please. Is this your first pint of real ale? Uh, well, I guess so. What's real ale, anyhow? Beer that's brewed from natural ingredients to traditional methods. It shouldn't be kept under pressure or refrigerated. And finally, it should have a good body and distinctive character. In other words, it's flat and warm with bits in, and it thinks you fall over. I'm sorry, but the pump appears to be broken. I can fix it for you. I don't think so. This is a job for a professional electrician. Oh well, at least the glass washer is still working. It's not my dear, is it? It just so happens I'm an electrician. Check out my credentials. Well, no. Isn't that marvellous? <laughs> Here's a house bedeviled with faulty wiring of a wayward nature. Here's you, an electric man, with a little plastic card to prove it. Hmm. I still want to see what you can do before I let you touch me beer pumps. You can make a start on the glass washer. And when you finish that, will you take a look at the pumps? No. Hi there, old timer. No. What? Nasty cold you've got there. As soon as the words left my lips, I regretted them. Is there such a thing as a cold which isn't nasty? I put the question to Father Mahoney. Father, says I, why were we born to suffer snot? What did he say? He said, it's my reward for being out all night like a sinner. <coughs> Pious prig. Anyway, this is no ordinary cold. It is the hay fever. Polynosis? Thank you. You're not a policeman, are you? Excuse me? Police? No. I'd know it if you were.
I'll see you later. Oh, no, you don't. Okay, I'm sorry. As soon as the old guy looked away, I grabbed his piece of wire. Well, well what? Are you going to fix this glass washer or not? No. I was about to reach for the pump when I came to my senses. A rash move like that in a strange country with strange customs could be my last. There was nothing physically wrong with the glass washer. There was nothing physically wrong with the glass washer. I used all my knowledge of electrical engineering to examine the plug. Seemed fine to me. Are you seen? I replaced the fuse with a piece of wire. I knew it was dangerous, but I was desperate enough to disregard everything I knew about standard safety precautions. Excuse me, Mr. Leary. I fixed your glass washer, no problem. Bingo! And a blessing to all the saints. A free half pint to that man, on the house. Now, could you take a look at the beer pumps? Well, I guess so, but I'm not making any promises. If you can't fix them, I'll have a riot on me hands. The pumps are in the cellar, right? That's right. No. You'll find a flashlight down there somewhere. Yeah. What a dumb place to store a flashlight. A dark cellar. The only way I was going to find anything down there was to feel around. I pushed the lever and heard the grating of metal. 
but nothing appeared to happen. I lifted the trap door and an overpowering smell of stale beer rose from the cellar below. I looked down on a stone tiled floor, way too far to jump. Excuse me. There was a nasty feeling in my guts I usually associated with light opera. It was Khan. What's the problem? Did you see what happened here a few minutes ago? What was that? A man was involved in an unfortunate accident. I didn't see anything. What about the boy? Well, he doesn't know anything either. The kid, well, you know how it is in these rural communities. Not enough genes to go around. I prayed McGuire had the sense to keep his mouth shut. Was the guy hurt bad? He's been taken care of, but he thinks he dropped a small parcel. You didn't happen to find it, did you? If I had, I would have taken it to the police. Of course. Thank you. Then I noticed a flash of light, something sparkling beneath the open trap door. It was Pegram's gem, all right. A large, uncut blue stone. As I held it aloft, I realized the fascination it could command. I guess I was already under its spell. Did you find it? What? Whatever you was looking for. Uh, yeah. Listen, McGuire. I want you to keep this to yourself. No problemo. Just chuck us up a crate of lager. No way. You're not old enough. We can sell it and make some cash. Forget it, kid. I couldn't betray Mr. Leary's trust. I could. For sure. That old misery guts deserves it. If you want to do me a favor, keep a lookout for that guy in the suit. Okay, but it'll cost you a pack of chips. Oh, and shout if you see that Ferrari! The man's arm lay across the towel, preventing me from moving it. As the man raised his arm to drink, I snatched the towel away.
Hi, do you speak English? Well, no. Uh, what if I was to say no? An implication of cognizance shrouded in denial. A pretty poser of a paradox indeed. I gave him the look I'd perfected when I was twelve and was going to be the greatest hypnotist of all time. It was a killer. Are you attempting to hypnotize me, or is it the constipation you're suffering? I was a little out of practice. Have you seen Professor Pegram? No, he's packed up and gone. Do you happen to know where? Back in England, I suppose. Did you happen to see a red sports car down on the road? I caught a glimpse of a flash of red on the hill and heard the racket. Sure, it was an awful noise. A sports car, you say? A Ferrari, to be exact. A racing car? And what was it doing here? The poor fella must have been lost. The driver of the Ferrari was involved in an accident. Is that so? Yeah. He knocked somebody down outside the bar. What an idiot! How could a thing like that happen? He was traveling too fast. So fast, he ran right under the car? I mean, the car was traveling too fast. But you'd have thought the idiot could have heard it coming. Maybe you know the guy who was hit by the Ferrari. His name is Sean Fitzgerald. Oh, I know him all right. That's me nephew, the idiot responsible for the stacking of my hay cart. Was he killed by the car? Oh no, but he has been abducted. Well, that's a relief now. Aren't you going to look for your nephew? What for? From what you say, it's too late. Well, you could report the matter to the police. Better not. Besides, what could they do? Well, they could mount a search. They have only the one bicycle between them. In a question of superior acceleration, I put me money on the Ferrari. Good book? A book? It's a passport to a world of fantasy and imagination. Yeah? What's the title? Creative Shelfing for Beginners, the 1978 edition. I think you ought to know exactly what Sean has gotten himself into. I'm not sure I want to know. But you're his uncle, his own flesh and blood. You're right, but what can I do? If I'm not here to guard it, some idiot might try to climb the haystack. What a moral dilemma. Stay here and guard this potentially lethal agricultural construction. Or to go off in search of the prodigal nephew, the very man responsible for said hazard? It'll need some thinking about. Why, there's no problem. You're right. Why didn't I think of it before? We'll demolish the haystack. You don't have to demolish the haystack to go look for Sean. I'll stay here in your place and warn anyone who's silly enough to climb it. Marvelous! I think I should start me inquiries in the bar. He strode off in the direction of McDevitt's bar, leaving me to contemplate the stack of hay. The stack of hay stopped, short of the top of the wall. Even if I stretched as far as I could, the wall was out of reach. What I needed was a slice or two of Alice's Wonderland. I inserted the end of the lifting key in the mortarless crack and gave it a firm shove. It remained lodged in the wall, jutting out to form a step. I tugged at the lifting key and found it was held quite securely.
Hey, Billy. The animal fixed on me with an evil glare. Behind the malice and resentment, there was a cool intelligence. How you doing, boy? I felt as threatened as I'd been by the assassin and his goons in Paris. It was the fiercest, meanest-looking old goat I'd ever laid eyes upon. Hey, Billy. The goat responded with a... The rope by which the goat was tethered had become tangled on the old plowshare. As I dipped my fingers into the soft white powder, I realized what it was. Plaster of Paris. I'd used it in kindergarten to make casts of animal paw prints. The only object on the table which interested me I placed my fingers and thumb into the holes in the wall. Nothing happened. I tried in vain to move the panel. I placed my fingers and thumb The statue was too heavy to lift. It overbalanced into the sand. As I swung the stone upright, I noticed it had left a pattern of holes in the sand.
I placed my fingers in the five impressions left by the fallen stone. It was weird. They fit perfectly. I sprinkled the plaster on the sand until the holes were filled. I smoothed the plaster level with the sand. It was my first experience of home improvement. I The faucet creaked, coughed, and spewed out a stream of rusty colored water. I shut off the faucet. I held the towel under the... The trickle of water was quickly absorbed by the plaster. I eased the solid piece of plaster from the sand. Underneath, it had formed a perfect copy of the statue. The hardened plaster cast fitted snugly into the five matching sockets. There was a soft thud, then Silence.
So, where did you stay last night? At McDevitt's. I got to drinking with Doyle and a couple of the guys. That explains why you look so ill today. Did you get any sleep at all? Not much. I had to share the room with another guy. Did he snow? Hardly. He was dead. Then Leary woke me in the middle of the night to help bail out the cellar. The cellar was flooded? Yeah. Some idiot had left the faucet running. And you say P. Graham has disappeared? Without a trace. But my visit wasn't a complete waste of time. P. Graham's gem? The Templar's gem. Whoever Jacques Marquet is, he's in for a disappointment. Jacques Marquet? He's the guy who should have collected the gem from Fitzgerald. What are your plans? I want to find out who, what, or where Montfaucon was. All I've got to go by is the name and a picture of a hanged man. 